didn't know till I was drunk though. You freak niggas played out. Your boy Crypto Blood and welcome to another episode of Double Spin. Hope your Sunday is going great. You're relaxing, kicking back. And first of all, I just want to give a shout out to Hotel 25. He requested this Nas, the message. Wasn't a real big Nas fan growing up, um, but he's definitely a hip hop figurehead, a legend in the game. And this is for you, Hotel 25. So hope you enjoy. Uh, we're going to talk about today um, the Lightning Network. And I found an interesting video that talks about how centralized this network is actually going to be. I had a conversation with a gentleman at a, at a meetup that I went to. It was actually my first Bitcoin, local Bitcoin meetup. And he's a, you know, he was a very big uh, um, proponent of Bitcoin. And, you know, I was telling him there's nothing wrong with Bitcoin as far as, you know, I think from an investment standpoint, it's, it's going to appreciate. I have no doubt about that. Um, but as a utility, you know, let's see how this lightning network rolls out. He thought it was already fully operational. Um, but then, we, you know, he did some research while we were there and, and found out that it was only about 20 percent running. And I think Andreas... Antonopoulos said that it would be fully operational, he believes, by 2019, early 2019, which is like seven, it's like dog years in cryptos, you know, it's like seven years. But at any rate, that's, you know, that's when they're projected to, to have this all rolled out. And this video is pretty interesting because um i want bitcoin to win you know that, that's why I'm, I'm not spreading fud or being uh hating on bitcoin no i just feel like you know all a lot of these other coins are really uh moving and evolving at a fast pace and bitcoin just is, is going to lose market share in my opinion um you know it's almost like uh you know with black holes you've got an event horizon like i feel like at a certain point, if Bitcoin, the core team, doesn't step their step their game up, it's going to get to a point of their their dominance in the um, in the market is going to get to an event horizon point where you can't come back. You know, where is that percentage? I don't know. Is it twenty percent, fifteen percent? You know. Is at some point though, there's a threshold where you will not be able to gain market share back and and have it be that number one payment, you know, gateway or payment system that we that we all that Satoshi Nakamoto envisioned for sure. So um, yeah, let's just take a look at this video and uh, you guys let me know your feedback on it. All right, it's your boy Crypto Blood. I'm out. Holla. Great day. So the original plan for this video was to discuss the fact that Bitcoin is dying and that the market as a whole needs to disconnect itself from Bitcoin in order to properly flourish. Whenever you look at the charts or graphs, if Bitcoin tumbles, every other coin falls accordingly. They follow the exact same movements and this should not be happening as every project is unique. But I've noticed that during my last few videos, give or take a few, people seem to think that I'm downplaying exactly what the Lightning Network will do for Bitcoin or that. As always, I'm spreading FUD. If someone says something negative or even truthful for that matter about a project that they are passionate about, they believe that this is FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, or something incorrect about a project. However, this does not apply if it is mathematically and logically proven. To start things off, no, I am not being paid, nor am I being funded by the evil overlords who have created Ripple or XRP in their dark menacing tower. This channel isn't about spreading misinformation, nor is it about creating fear. If this were the case, I'd be making videos with colorful thumbnails proclaiming that the end of the world is near when the market drops by 12% while holding my face looking shocked. To start things off, for those who do not know, the Lightning Network is the Bitcoin Network's proposed solution to its scaling issue, i.e., 
The one where payments take hours and sometimes days, fees are high, and now a number of companies are shunning Bitcoin in favor of other coins that have scaled and will have no issue doing so in the future. As you may have realized over the past couple of months or even a year now, Bitcoin is now being heralded as digital gold and as a store of value rather than its original purpose of being a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized electronic cash system, one that would allow us to have fast, immediate, secure, and inexpensive ways of sending payments around the world. As time has gone on, however, we have realized that this has changed dramatically, and as such, to make a long story short, the Lightning Network has been proposed to be the solution to this issue in order to speed up the network and to lower fees for everyone. One of the many issues at the moment is in order for Bitcoin to scale properly or to receive an upgrade, it must first go through and be accepted by people who create Bitcoin. Those are the miners. This is why, if you remember a few months ago during the entire Segwit2x fiasco, I constantly mentioned that there needed to be a network consensus in order for this to be implemented. Things don't work or cannot work on the network unless this system of people gives the thumbs up. The problem is they typically do not give the thumbs up. Why, you might ask, why would the miners not want Bitcoin to upgrade? Well, to put it extremely simply, transactions on the Bitcoin network are verified by miners. Miners, in turn, get rewarded for their verification. But you might have noticed that the last few months, the transactions have been extremely high. Transactions going through the network that have a higher fee attached to them tend to get verified the quickest as fees become higher on the Bitcoin network. Guess who gets paid these higher fees for verifying transactions on the network? That's right, the same people who control the production and creation of the coins. The idea behind the Lightning Network is it'll be a network that runs parallel to the Bitcoin network and it will be pre-funded. This is very important. It will essentially help with smaller transactions on the network as these tend to clog up the network because realistically there are more people sending $5 at a time than there are sending $145,000 worth of Bitcoin. And as such, the people behind Lightning will be developing a routing facility which will help to identify which nodes on the network have sufficient funding on orders for payments to go through them. Meaning, in order for payments to go through the network and to be sure that the payments can be and are pre-funded, they will need to go through centralized hubs that have enough funds for payments to go through on the Lightning Network. So this is where it kind of gets interesting because this has led to the idea and pretty much a guarantee that large organizations, whatever they might be, will open up their own Lightning nodes and will essentially become the banks of the Bitcoin network. What's more, the Lightning Network isn't permissionless, meaning if you send a payment through Lightning and it happens to go through a hub that doesn't want your payment, they can essentially deny your payment as they will be able to decide whether they open channels for transactions to pass through them. This will cause a number of problems and this could, in essence, create another situation that we have right now with miners who control and verifying transactions on the network as fees are generated from people running nodes and or super nodes on the network What's to stop people from connecting network nodes in order to be able to receive higher fees from sending payments through the network? And to put it simply, normal people do not have 1,000 Bitcoin to preload onto payment channels for transactions to go through. As nice as it sounds that many people or anyone can run nodes on the Lightning Network, as of now, the average person barely has one Bitcoin in their disposal. So logically, who will be the ones to fund this network? And this is even before the possibility of large network hubs who run multiple nodes simply turning off their nodes, thus clogging up the network or the economic censorship as it is being called, where funds can simply be rejected on the network. This is actually a problem that we even have on the main Bitcoin network right now. There are tons of people who are sending tiny transactions through the network, and this is what causes it to clog up even quicker. So what's to stop someone who wants to destroy Bitcoin in the future from getting their own hub or their own nodes, or their own super nodes, and simply stopping transactions as they try to go through the network because this is a possibility. Another possibility and a concern that's constantly coming up when you look through the Lightning Network is the possibility of large corporations who are running super nodes, collecting your data, and then also having the possibility of them, or rather without a doubt of them, selling your information for your payments because we know that Bitcoin is not private and we already know that Facebook and Google sell our data. So what's stopping someone from selling payment information of millions of people on a payment network to someone else that benefits them? This discussion could literally go on forever, but for the sake of not making it a 45-minute video, I will end it here. But the point is... 
A number of people online keep saying and screaming that Lightning will be the solution for Bitcoin and don't realize just how counterproductive it actually is to the original idea of Bitcoin. It's even been noted many times by developers and coders that Bitcoin in its current state can actually increase its MB size anytime at once. The even an increase to 4 MB would have no significant after effects on the speed or weight of the network. This has led a large number of people in the community to believe that Lightning has been created simply to sell nodes to companies who will then be able to profit from them. And since I can feel the anger boiling from some of you across the screen, I'm going to make sure to provide a handful of articles about the Lightning Network from a number of different sources so it's not just one website because it's important that people know what's going on. Once again, this is not FUD, I hate that word. It is actual news and what's happening to the Bitcoin network and what will potentially take place within the next two years. So please pay attention. Like I always say, please do your own research. Everything that I say, please do your own research on it. I am just human and I have my own flaws, but this is what I've been reading and this is what everyone has been saying, especially people who have been working on the project. Time to backtrack. 